The Carbon E7 is actually the world's first purpose-built law enforcement patrol vehicle. It's built exclusively for law enforcement. It's not a retail passenger vehicle or a fleet car with a bunch of aftermarket equipment on it and made to be a police car. The concept demonstration vehicle was actually built by hand. It's a one of a kind. Uh, it's really just a proof of concept to show law enforcement agencies that yes, this can be done. And uh, it has all the equipment in it. It's fully functional. It does drive, does have our BMW powertrain in it. Uh, and it has all the law enforcement equipment in it that operates as well. Well. This is our onboard rapid command architecture. This is where the officer will go to do everything that he needs to do to interact with all the law enforcement equipment as well as the vehicle functions. We've got infrared camera. This is a nighttime vision capability. Then down low, we have two automatic license plate recognition cameras. It'll take a picture of the vehicle. It'll take an actual picture of the license plate how it interpreted that license plate using optical character recognition, and then it runs those numbers and letters uh, against the national and local database for any kind of wants or warrants. You'll notice that we don't have the spot lamp on the A-pillar like most police vehicles do. So we move the spot lamp off of the A-pillar, put it in the back can of the mirror, and then gave the officer a joystick control on the center console so that he could control the, the uh, spot lamp at his will. Uh, also, we've got all of the emergency lighting integrated into the vehicle so you, you don't see a typical light bar mounted onto the roof of the vehicle. It's all integrated into the body lines of the car. We have weapons of mass destruction ca uh, sensing capabilities. These two NACA ducts on the back quarters uh, are inlets for air. They passively sense the air and determine whether or not there's any radiation, chemical, or biological threats in the area. The seat was actually designed specifically for an officer wearing a duty belt in his normal gear from day to day. So you can see we've scalloped out the edges of the seats to allow room for guns, radios, handcuffs, and anything else that may be strapped onto our waists. And then the one last nice little touch specifically for the officer on the street is this air scarf on the headrest. This will actually blow hold, uh, cold or hot air right down the officer's neck depending on the time of the year. And then we also have heated and cooled cup holders. The first thing you'll notice that's different about our rear doors is they're hinged from the rear. Uh, we call these coach doors. Uh, the reason for the coach doors is it provides a much larger opening, as you can see here, for inserting or removing somebody who's in custody. The entire rear comp passenger compartment is molded plastic. That's the number, there are a number of different reasons for that, but primarily you have people who are in the back of the car who may lose control of their bodily functions, and you need to be able to rinse that out. You have drain plugs on each side so you can get them, get them out of the car, wash it out, pull the drain plug, and flush it like a toilet. The next step are this. Uh, we are currently working through the Department of Energy to, to get our loan approved with them. We're about 50% through the process right now. Uh, as we close on that loan, then we're about 36 months out from actually producing the vehicle. Uh, and of course, we have to go through all of the engineering program and uh, validation, crash testing, all the normal things that you would do with any other type of vehicle.